The second generation of Pokemon games are considered by many to be some of, if not the easiest Pokemon games of all time. With a lackluster level curve and an entire pushover post game, it's easy to see why. However, what if we removed healing items from the Pokemarts? And what if we, the player, were forced to fight every trainer in the process? And what if every single route was a one-way gauntlet? In some cases, spanning multiple routes or an entire region. This is Pokemon Gauntlet Gold. I played this game as a hardcore nuzlocke. Here are the rules on screen. Feel free to pause and read. The first choice we have to make in the run is the starter. Now, Cyndaquil isn't great for a couple of reasons, being a lack of bulk and versatility in a TM limited game. Chikorita on the other hand is a common pick with access to stab moves as early as level 8, and access to healing and synthesis fairly early even before Morty. However, I go with Totodile for a super specific niche. It is the angriest crocodile on the land. After a quick trip to Mr. Pokemon's house, we get stopped by our rival and sweep him under the rug with relative ease. We get the Pokedex and some Pokeballs, allowing us to pick up a Sentret, Rattata, and a Metapod, as we also pick up a Bellsprout who I trade for Rocky the Onyx, and a Zubat in Dark Cave. I also went into the ruins of Alf to pick up an unknown, just in case I needed it. Now for the first gym. Faulkner's gym is a very odd one as there's a gym trainer with a Pokemon at the same level as the level cap, which is disgustingly low at level 9, but Rocky the Onyx sits on it handily, as well as the other trainer being no hassle. We then get to Faulkner, and now is Totodile's time to show you why I picked it. With the move Rage in Generation 2, the move doubles in power every time you get hit after using it, meaning that with Totodile's already solid physical stats, you can handle this quite easily. Because if, if you go in with rock types, you actually just get mud slapped to oblivion, as you might have seen in my full series Nuzlocke videos before. But Totodile's Rage is quite easily enough to pull through, securing our first gym badge of the run. Now we can move forward, but not without a quick little pit stop to pick up the Flash HM and a couple of items in the Sprout Tower, as well as a Ghastly, who with its normal and fighting immunity can be handy. Oh, and Trade Evos are level ups in this game. A nice touch to make a lot more Pokemon available, including a certain spoon-wielding behemoth that we'll get to later on. Nonetheless, we also get a Marit heading into Union Cave, we get a Geodude, Ilex Forest then gives us an Oddish. We then head over to Kurt's house where he tells us that some rocket goons are in the Slowpoke well trying to take tails to sell off. But obviously, we can't let that happen. And would you believe it, yet another gauntlet. Almost like that's the name of the game? We pick up a wild Slowpoke in the process, but these guys actually aren't half bad with Butterfree. However, we have to keep Butterfree healthy enough, as after the boss grunt heal at the end, we are jumped by our rival who wants another fight. This fight actually wiped me out on my first attempt, as the starter at level cap is kinda scary with stab Razor Leaf. Nonetheless, Fluffy takes out Ghastly, Butterfree steamrolls the Bay Leaf, and Furret finishes the job. Time for Bugsy now, but not before some fights against a bunch of children with their pet insects. Between Geodude and Furret, these guys stood no chance, and same goes for Bugsy, who goes down to just 4 rock throws. Yet another badge into the books. Now we can get some more encounters. We get a Pineco from Azalea Town, Route 34 nets a Spearow. Overall, a really solid pair of Pokemon. Route 35 then nets a Drowsy, who we can trade in Goldenrod for Muscle the Marchop. But now for the fun part, the gym. As much as I'd like to slam everything with Marchop, it's just too slow to do that. So Onyx and Geodude have to put in a lot of work here. Either way, just one potion later, we are up against Whitney. She leads with her metronome Clefairy as I sling muscle in to go to town. Low Kick just misses the kill and her Clefairy manages to pull out Dragon Rage, leaving us in a pretty awkward position as Miltank can definitely kill us from here. I take a chance and end up losing Machop for the first death of the run and send in Onyx as its superb defense should hold out. And we get attracted. 
to be honest, a Switch probably would have been the better play here, but alas, I tried staying in to go for Screech, and Miltank's rollouts start to build up, leaving even Onyx in danger. So I go out to Geodude, thinking he can probably just about live this 320 base rollout, and I get absolutely slammed, losing Geodude as well. I then go to Butterfree in an effort to put it to sleep, and it fails miserably, costing its life. Enter Rage Croconaw. Yep, Rage back again. It works stupendously well, getting us the third badge in by far the roughest fight of the entire run. The next split gives us even more encounters. On Route 36, I fish, and Poloag shows its lovely little mug for me, as it was realistically a choice between an ordinary encounter in the grass, Pseudowoodo, or fish. As you can probably tell, I'm more or less skimming over gauntlets at this point, and will probably bring up less of them, purely because I don't want this video to be three weeks long. We go into the bug catching contest and get ourselves a dig TM, oh and a weedle I guess. But Route 37 gives us an absolute treat in Nidoran. Now though, we get to go into the first really difficult gauntlet of the run. Burn Tower, and Equitique Gym. Yep, both at once. Buckford really cooked with some of these gauntlet designs, and there's no way that I could have thought of that especially. After beating this Fire Breather, we then get to fight the rival for a third time, and unfortunately for him, he gets mauled by Raticate and Golbat. But, now we get to go to the hard part of the gauntlet, preserving your super effective moves PP for the Morty fight at the end of it as the Gengar can and has claimed multiple runners before, including myself, as that's where I wiped on attempt 2. So let's avenge attempt 2. He leads with a ghastly that goes down to Golbat's bite, as his Horner comes in and curses itself to death after one more. Gengar is now in and ready to destroy me, so I stay in and try to bait a Hypnosis to put me into sleep, so I can switch in on a Dream Eater, but Gengar gets flinched and actually goes down to 3 bites, as I switch to Rat on the second Horner, and a couple of digs wins us the fourth Gym Badge. After another pretty gruesy gauntlet with the Kimono Girls though, we get the Surf HM and begin what in my opinion is the toughest gauntlet in the game. You know that Pokemon Center in Olivine? Blocked. So you know what it is. Ecritique all the way down to Sea Anwood, with every single trainer being mandatory along the way. A truly tough trek, with HP and PP dwindling by the end of it. This gauntlet actually claimed multiple runs during the races itself. Speaking of which, if you wanted to see the commentary of it, it was casted by Bugfit Agron and Maximino on Agron's Twitch. Give him a follow, he just hit 500. But before we go through the gauntlet, though, we can get some more Pokemon now that we have Surf, picking up Tentacool, Execute, and a Goldeen, as well as a Moonstone to evolve our Nidoran before the gauntlet. And with a team of Gyarados, Nidoking, Flappy, Golbat, Fero, and Raticate, we head into what is the, probably the longest of the game. Starting off, it's pretty simple. Most things get Oko'd, and we also pick up Taurus, an absolute unit. We'll get to use this a bit later as we can't backtrack anymore. The first mistake I make of the gauntlet however is not knowing what this trainer had. So I had to switch Rat in on a confusion which unfortunately crit. No matter, we're still looking pretty good. Oh, Olivine, let's go heal. Oh wait, yeah, I can't do that. Route 40 gives us a Krabby from Rock Smash but we also pick up one of the most important things in the run. The Strength HM. Hmm. Base 80 power, normal type move, learnable by pretty much 60-70% of Pokemon. Who'd have thought it's pretty good? This swimmer here had two Gyarados and he's arguably one of the scariest trainers in the gauntlet, but it's fine. Even with Thrash at level 1, we can still absolutely throttle him. But we get relatively lucky and hit a roll on the first one and only take one Thrash from the second. The last trainer of the gauntlet, however, Swimmer Wendy, carries a pair of Horsey with Dragon Rage, and after a multitude of fights, Dragon Rage can be absolutely lethal. But we're in a pretty good spot and we can get away cleanly. In Seamwood City, we pick up a Shuckle. This guy's a great EXP sponge throughout the run if we need it, as well as a man sign on Route 41 before we head into Chuck's gym. His gym itself wasn't actually all that bad. But now, Chuck. He leads with his Primeape as Tentacruel Surf actually takes it out with a crit, leaving Polarath to clean up the mess. I stay in until I'm forced to switch, chipping away with Surf, as I then swing to Golbat, who finishes the job with a couple wing attacks, and that's badge 5. Time to go into price split. I bet the level cap goes up a lot here. Uh oh. One level? With all these fights in between? Huh. Great. On the plus side though, most of them are pretty low level, so we could actually be in a worse spot. Now that I have a good rod though, we can get better fishing encounters like this Staryu from Olivine that I killed, back on Route 39 we go get a Magnemite, a Mankey on Route 42, and a Venonat at the start of the next gauntlet on Route 43, before heading up to the Lake of Rage to sort out the Shiny Gyarados. And Forest took a Grit Dragon Rage, and eviscerated the big red prawn as we also get the EXP share for the red scale as a result. Now, let me explain what I'm going to do with my Shuckle here. 
In an ideal world, Shuckle never has to be sent out into battle, meaning that it can technically be leveled up as high as I want, as long as it never enters the field, even if it goes to or above the level cap for the gym. So with Shuckle in tow holding the EXP share, I can actually level up my Pokemon a little bit higher than I would have been able to without it, which gives me a little bit more wiggle room and could be the difference between a death or a wipe. With that knowledge though, most of my Pokemon could be at or around level 30. So let's go storm the rocket hideout, Lance wants to do with a hyper beam. How the fuck did he not die? I guess he has plot armor or some shit? Nonetheless, most of the grunts go down without much fight, until, yeah, you know that normal type with Pokemon with like normal stab and 110 attack that couldn't kill a coughing? Yep. <sighs> it sucks, but we have to move forward, we can't dwell on it. We have a tough fight against a Zubat, Rat, and coughing? Um, uh, Generation 2 never fails to amaze us all, does it? After entering the password though, we have another fight with an executive who actually knows how to evolve a Pokemon with our Arbok, Gloom, and Murkrow. After that though, we defuse the electrodes and get out pretty handily with just one death. Now for Price. The plan here was to leave with Primeape to just slap him up with fighting moves, but we can't have everything, and Primeape unluckily gets frozen by Jinx. And at this point during the race, myself and other streamer Galaxy were actually exactly level on the exact same trainer at that. After Price, however, I had to slow down a bit and take it a little more seriously in an effort to be the first person to complete this Nuzlocke, but because there was so little time left on the clock, I didn't bother switching my team order. So I let Primate go down on the first turn here to seal, Ampharos revenge killed it though, bringing out Piloswine, we were able to go to Gyarados and take it down with a Surf, and Ampharos finished the battle, winning us badge number 6. After a quick little detour to Sea and Wood City to get the secret potion, we can help Amphi and unlock the way into Jasmine's gym. You'd think it'd be alright. You remember the burn tower into Morty's gym thing from before? That's back again, this time with multiple back-to-back -back fights in the Olivine Lighthouse, followed by Jasmine herself. The Lighthouse isn't too big of a hassle except for the fact that there's permanent sandstorm up at all times. Otherwise, it's just a couple of simple back-to-backs, and not a huge amount of hassle until Jasmine. I was actually unaware of her level cap. I thought it was 34, turned out it was 35, but at the same time, I went in with underlevel Pokemon, a grave mistake I've made multiple times in the past. With that though, let's fight Jasmine. She starts with Magnemite so I can bring in Raticate first, realize my mistake and dig to take both out. Then comes the Ace Steelix, who's a bit finicky as its towering defense stat of 200 is walling any physical move I throw at it. So I go to Gyarados who has Surf, I do about 65%, and then even though a sunny day's up, I kind of expected to kill on the second one, but I get unlucky and miss the range. Steelix screeches me here and I completely ignored it and decided to stay in, going for a Dragon Rage as I do just over a third as she rock throws my halved defense Gyarados, obliterating it in the process. Yeah. In between my molding over a loss of one of my best soldiers, I swing in a Nido King and with a couple more hits win the 7th gym badge, unlocking the most daunting gauntlet so far. But now, it's time. 26 fights with 6 Pokemon. No healing, no nothing. Bugford also went so far as making sure you couldn't fly out of Goldenrod to escape, so you had to be absolutely set with your Pokemon. We set ourselves up with Steelix, Nidoking, Fero, Magneton, Slowbro, and our Sponge, Shucky. The first few floors are actually pretty much nothing, just with back-to-backs and Rattatars and Zubats. Child's play. However, the first executive could make or break a run. With five coughings and a wheezing, all loaded with explosion moves, Proton is ready to wreak absolute havoc. Luckily for me though, I came prepared. Rocky the Steelix with Rage and Mudslap actually does enough here. With this being its main purpose in the entire gauntlet, even if all of them blew up, Rocky would still be just fine. And with Magneton also being in the party, if I was accuracy dropped, I could somehow freely switch to it with no consequences and go straight back to Steelix. And by the time Rage was kicking along, the fight was as good as done, deathless to top it off. Now we go into the underground, and we kick off with, oh, a back-to-back? -back? Yeah, that's fine. What we actually kick off with is a rival fight. He carries a 5-mon team, which on paper is scary until you see everything about it. It's basically the same team as before with a sneeze lighted on, and unless you pick Chikorita, his start is fully evolved. But without level difference, this fight is no hassle whatsoever, as Magneton takes out Golbat with a crit, Nidoking takes out Magnemite and Sneasel, Fury takes down Meganium, as well as Haunter, and yet another win chalked up against the rival as we can now struggle with a puzzle just to get a smoke ball. The next executive has just a Golbat who gets clapped by Slowbro's Confusions, now though come the final two executives, Oriana who has an Arbok that goes down to two Confusions, Murkrow that goes down to a combo with Rocky and Fero, and Vileplume who falls to a single fly. 
Archer is the finale, however, of Radio Tower, carrying a hand out that gets wiped by Nido King's double kick, coughing that goes down a serve, and Houndoom that takes two double kicks, and with that, the arguably hardest Johto Gauntlet is cleared, opening the way into Claire's gym, which of course is another gauntlet. We pick up a seal in the Whirl Islands. This will prove handy for Claire, being a bulky mon that resists Ice Beam and Surf, as well as having access to Ice Beam if we delay the seal evolution at 37. Speaking of Claire, she comes packing three Dragonairs and her trusty Kingdra. The Dragonair all have a different base 90 power special move, and you don't really know which one is which until it's too late. Nonetheless, we also have Jinx, but with the new partners, let's take down the 8th gym leader and get to the lead. I lead Jinx against the first Dragonair, and take it out with a nice punch. She slings out her Kingdra second as both of us miss our attacks, and I hit the lovely kiss on the second try. This gives me a free chance to go for the kill with Jinx, and a couple turns later, however, Kingdra awakens and blasts us with Hyper Beam, leaving us with just a sliver of HP. But Jinx finishes it and the Dragonair's in the back, getting us badge number 8. Well, after Claire forces us to get her Lucky Charm or whatever in the Dragon's Den, but we also pick up a Dratini on the way! Nice! Now, it's time to talk about a couple of things before the Elite Four. Firstly, the routes on the way are a gauntlet, yes. But I'm more here to talk about two Pokemon in particular. Firstly, I'll skim over this one a bit, but Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh in literally any other generation would probably be the single best fire type hands down. However, in a challenge like this where moves are an extremely limited resource, especially later on, it only really having access to Sacred Fire and Fly is actually pretty ordinary. But with Safeguard and Recover, it still doesn't even come close to outshining Generation 2's best Nuzlocking Pokemon, Bliss Alakazam. This spoon-wielding menace has been teased a couple of times now, but if you ever Nuzlocked Generation 2, you'll have a strong awareness as to why the coin case was hidden until later, along with the punch TMs being locked to the Elite Four at this time, later on, now in Celadon. Otherwise, this run would be as simple as click Kadabra, click Punch, click Win. And well, as much as Eevee is cool to get in Goldenrod, which one runner push for Ice did, it saved her Elite Four, it still doesn't hold a candle to Alakazam. Let me rattle off some moves for you real quick. Recover, Safeguard, Reflect, Light Screen, Future Sight, Psychic, Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Shadow Ball, Zap Cannon, Dig! If you know anything about Alakazam and Generation 2's terribly balanced post-game, you'll realize exactly where this run is going. Anyway, enough chit chat, let's talk E4. With access to all of the punch TMs in relatively infinite supply, I can buy enough that I can interchange moves during the league on Alakazam, as well as teach them to some other mons. The team, Alakazam, and the supporting cast of Steelix, Ho-Oh, Ampharos, Jinx, and Tentacruel. And trust me here, it really is a supporting cast. So, let's go. I'll leave it up to past me to showcase Zam's true power. Just enjoy this Elite Four, because it's not every day that a single Pokemon can be so busted. Hell yeah. Alright, T-Punch. Zadu again, T-Punch. Jinx, Fire Punch. That lived? You motherfucker. That tells me that this is living. Hold up, what's this doing? Hold on, hold on. Hold the fuck out. Why am I getting teased on my penis? Zam, this is this guy. Which is special? 12. Oh my god, 12? That's really good. Wait, you do kill this. Okay. Um, bro, you got a T punch? No. Bro, do Can you amnesia? Oh, okay, you can. It's that. Cool game. Insane. Common Gen 1 L. Oh, fuck me. I forgot fucking Kogus first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat shit here, aren't I? Alright, it's fine, that's fine. Sacred fire. This should be right. How the f Bro, why are you like this? How to fango a girl. Alright, I have no sacred fire PP left. Let's go, dude. 
I'm providing education to the boys, true, and as long as they don't know how to please them. Case in point. Again. Well. Partial. Alright, let's go. Rocky with the EQs. You made my earthquake! Yeah, I'll make your earthquake! Alright, Vile Plume. This is the free switch to this. We just Ice Punch. Hound Doom. Free switch to this. Unlucky on the burn, but we just Surf. Wow, that didn't kill? Really? Damn! I full on thought that was gonna kill. Gengar, this guy only has physical moves. <laughs> And curse, surprisingly. Um, so this is probably Destiny Bond. Why can you criticize my fingering technique? I don't think I will. Man. Pretty perfect, clearly. Clearly, it's pretty damn good. Okay, good. She wasn't that. Don't be smart, thank you. She wasn't smart enough to recognize that I could have killed her there. Right. Oh, I got whirlwinded, okay. You should kill. Come on. I will avenge E Man. And proceed to win. Copium. I think Kano might be tomorrow. I don't know. It's half eight, so. And I've, I've only been live for eight and a half hours. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Pardon me. Of course, we don't have a lucky egg. I don't even know if that was a thing in Gen 2. Alright. 50? 47. See, Bug, this is why the punches should be in Celadon City. I've had two Pokemon come out of my bag in the C4. Well, three. But I probably could have had two. If I played perfectly. I should put the punches in cell at all. <laughs> Alright, Pogzam, you're 51. No, you're not. Alright, Pogzam. I'm sorry I just blasted, bursted all of your eardrums. By the way. 11 over 12 to kill. Or, what is, oh, wait, I can just go Rocky. Oh no, I can just go Rocky, hold on, I can just go Rocky. Rocky even lives great hype beam, which is the only move that kills this here. But then on Chorizord, fuck. Um, can I go like Holo on Chorizord? I can go I can go ho I can go ho on chores or Show me that hyper beam baby Wow You know It'd be nice if I had a move that killed this <laughs> Fuck I would I would forget like iron tail or whatever Do you have to do this? It's not 139 96, fuck no, you don't. I guess we just go back to Bob Blair, man. Um, I can't lie. Kind of thought I'd be at least able to hit this, but I forgot. I don't have any moves to hit this. Um, Actually, Ampharos can kill this. Problem is, it has to dodge crits. I mean, I have Magnet in the PC. I have Magneton as well! Ah, <sighs> should be right. Empty's not- Oh, I just realized, Empty's not actually likely to kill here. At all. Oh. What? 
Is that to guarantee that the hyper beam would kill? Wait, what? We hit the range. I should probably magically make Kama here and I'll get away. I think it tastes pretty good. And it would break the social stigma and drinking Kama also probably come to affect our lives pretty positively. I mean, we could not have to do the efforts to suck a dick to harvest it. And we could just eat it in the bowl water to get your movie and sell it in Stefan, you are one of the people of all time. That's all I can say, my brother. It's all about you. Oof. I thought you were already dead. Uh, this one has Fire Blast and Outrage. Shit. We're at 35 at 48. This is... This is actually complete random move. Oh dear. I think ho on this bit, right? Good defense. Good defense. Good to death. Okay. I can recover that. Until you get confused anyway. There we go. Safeguard up. Does that get rid of the confusion? I actually have no idea. That's concerning. I'm dead to crit. Okay. I'll recover here. I was gonna say, he full restore when he gets confused. Truly a battle between two go to right now. I wanna lie. I wanna recover here. Be safe. That rage. It's fine. I thought this was dead. But no. There we go. Is the issue. Someone's got a crit before long. And I'm pretty sure he has another four store. Fuck you, Stefan. <laughs> Bro saying, oh god, fat, 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 fuck. I'm gonna kill myself. I wanna die. So. Oh god! Bro, that's insane. That's insane. Even I wouldn't send that. We're through the rest of it. Even I wouldn't send that shit. Jesus. Alright, how much are you doing? 33 to 35% to Ampharos. 23 to 28%. Yeah, you're doing fucking nothing, bitch. Oh, you about to bed me? No crit. Please don't crit. Okay. Oh, we did get this. And he outspeeds me, so it's actually kind of a good thing. Because we live pretty hyper now. But we don't need to. So Zane's pretty good. Who would have thought? A mon with 135 special attack and 120 speed and coverage is pretty good. But now it's time to kick the gauntlet into overdrive with the Kanto gauntlet. Yep, it's one gauntlet. Eight gyms, an entire region, no Pokemon centers. Well, here goes nothing. After we find this guy's kid and return her to her grandpa, we get to exit the SS Aqua, and this is the last time we get healing for quite some time, if you couldn't tell. Luckily for us though, the trainers in Kano are actually fairly sparse and they're fairly low level, meaning for the most part, we should be able to one-shot everything. As a result, I'm only gonna be covering gym leaders. First up on the hit list is Surge. The Lightning Lieutenant has 5 fast electric types, but unfortunately for him, absolutely zero coverage, meaning that Rocky can go to town on him taking all 5 kills with high powered rage. Before Sabrina, I leveled my Nidoking to level 55 to have just enough speed, factoring in the badge boost, to outspeed Alakazam by 1 point, and then kill all 3 psychics with Shadow Balls. 
Two down, six to go. We then scoot across to Celadon to take out Erika for a nice defeat, going in with Alakazam, taking everything with absolute ease using Ice Punch and Psychic. So let's go to Misty. She leads with Golduck so Zam can slam it with a Thunder Punch as well as Starmie before Quagsire comes in and goes down to a Psychic. Lapras is the last Pokemon and with a bit of an issue as Thunder Punch can do nowhere near enough to one shot, but after some deliberation, we decide to stay in and send it with Zam's Thunder Punch which does around 80% and luckily she goes for Rain Dance giving us a free victory. Halfway there. Next up we go to take on the most laughable gym leader possibly of all time in Janine who does nothing but tarnish her father's legacy as the Fuchsia Gym with an incompetent team of poisons that all go down to a single hit from Zan. This is pretty good, huh? Now we get to take on Brock and his rock hard team. Luckily for us, we have a jellyfish ready to maraud on Brock's parade. How? Surfing on Graveler, Rhyhorn, why is this not evolved? Omastar, Kabutops, and Onyx. Yep, not even evolved, but it is what it is. Let's pick up the Volcano Badge in the longest gym fight ever. Yep, it's, it's already over. Now time for what is probably the actual hardest fight of the run. With a worn down team, as much as I can heal HP, I can't heal PP. Leaving us with our backs up against the wall, let's do this. Blue. The Viridian City Gym Leader is the only thing blocking us from our victory lap. Shall we dance? He leads with Pidgeot as early Dragonite going for Thunder Punch because if I went for an Ice Punch here, Mirror Move would actually have killed me. And thanks to controllers disconnecting, I had to save state. It's a pain, I know. But if you want to see the full VOD, it's still live on my Twitch for the time being. One more Thunder Punch takes out the big bird, bringing in right on D's nuts. Knowing it can't be Earthquake, I send out Nido King and take it out with the Surf. Alakazam then rears its spoons, loading up a big Psychic. And this time, I can't outspeed, forcing me to switch into my own Alakazam and whittle it down with punches before killing. The second to last Pokemon is Exeggutor, who actually goes down a double Ice Punch. This brings out Arcanine as the final Pokemon, and with extreme speed as well as Fire Blast, this guy isn't messing around. This guy forces me to go through to Alakazam and then to Tentacruel to bring out Ho-Oh, who can't even two-hit KO this thing with Stab Fly on 130 attack stat. Why is this guy so mid? Either way, Ho-Oh does eventually get the job done, and after a third full restore on Arcanine, winning us the 16th and final gym badge. Now it's time to take on Red, and rather than bring a band of misfits along like Radicate, Furret, and Unknown, I decided just to bring the six Pokemon that took us through the Kanto region. ho -Oh. Its job? To sit there and be chunky. Rocky? Kill the rat. Tentacruel? Charizarding. Dragonite? Finish it. The others? Support. Otherwise, I'll just leave this to pass me. If you're still sticking around at this point of the video, you should probably subscribe, as you're maybe a little entertained. Or not. Either way, let's get it done! Fun. I don't outspeed anything. I can't rage. <laughs> I couldn't, could I? I don't live like Blastoise or some shit, probably. Oh, 78, Blastoise red. Surf kills almost. Flame throw off from Charizard kills. Big sad. I wanted to be funny and do rage. I should have brought like for alligator or some shit. Oh, the rage wouldn't have been very good now. Should have brought Gator. And just clowned with rage. Just give it max speed static XP in a game with no static XP and just fucking blah in this motherfucker. It's a face. Uh, Espeon. I don't have anything right. Oh my god, lads. This has mud slap. Oh, not mud slap. Ah. It also has suck, but mud slap. Oh, I didn't really mean to do that. But, okay. <coughs> Fuck it, we ball. <coughs> oh, I got speed after off. That's not fun. I'm also like minus two attack, minus two defense, or minus two speed after some shit right now. <laughs> Alright, let's just go hollow and just fuck this guy up with a fly. I mean, okay. Secret Fire. We're in crit range. Oh, should be right. Nice burn. And the reflex gone. I'm just gonna recover here.
Because he should heal here now. No! What? I'm trying to think of like, when the Pokemon will heal. I'm thinking of like, CK. How he just heals his Pokemon. Randomly, almost. Oh shit. Poe's gonna die. Poe's gonna die, lads. <laughs> Gentry Rider can only heal on high. That makes sense as to why he healed anything on ZK. Yeah, Horror's dead. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Espeon died from the burn. Oh, yo, okay. <laughs> Let him cook. Let him cook, lads. Let him cook. Wait, I can outheal the flying surf. I can outheal the surf. That's sad. Random move? True. Crit, 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 crit me, crit me, crit me, you pussy! Come on! Alright. Uh, yeah, we just fly. Fly's actually a range to kill here, but we're gonna save the fire for the bunnies. Brain dance, okay then. Bro saw me use a fire move and said, no, you're not doing that no more. <coughs> Although this just fucks Charizard over as well. It's great. Um Is this Charizard or is it Snorlax? It's probably Lax, right? Yeah. This guy has curse. This guy's kinda scary. Oh no, it doesn't have curse. I'm chatting. <laughs> Um. <coughs> Go follow my throat, man. Shit, hell, really. Oh, uh, it does 25% with the body slam, so we're fine. Let's get a burn. Even though it's half damage in the lane, this is gonna do fuck all. Here's the burn. Into the body slam. Recover here. We're dead to crit, so I may as well. I've got to get a deathless cano, don't I? Like completely deathless. So, what you're saying, Buggy, is if he only heals his highest level mon, I can stall this as well, and he's just never gonna full restore. That's sad, bro. I'm getting 07 for Snorlax. Bro's just burning to death. Oh, it was raining when he got burned. My guy, my guy stuck his hand on the gas, like on the barbecue or some shit. Well, yeah. Horror oh, detected running ballad. True push. How are you? How are you? Beans with the raid, yo. How we doing, homie? Hope you're well. How was... Were you doing the draft race? Were you hosting? If I'm not mistaken. How'd that go for you, man? Hope it went well. Knack with the follow. Thank you, thank you. Draft race, yeah, let's go. We're being completely virtuous with a ho uh, in this game that actually allows you to get it. And... The funniest part is, this is the most hollows done in the entire game. Holy crap, is this game hit? Is this hit game Gauntlet Gold? Indeed it is, eh, man. I've avenged you, my brother. I have avenged you. Give me time to cook Clay Split. Bro. <laughs> Look at my Magnet Nido Boom Dolly and Radio Tower. That sounds like a skill issue, honestly. <clears throat> Where was your Rocky chatting? That's a crit. Can I? No. Oh no, he full restored. Duh. Arrested. Close enough, right? Fucking die. Die. It's about to over level, man! Oh, That's when you bring a, a shuckle. That's when you bring Shucky to do the one thing it's good at. <laughs> Nothing. Oh no! Not a dead pokey! 
Mann! Horf suffered the fate of deserves. Stefan, what the fuck? <laughs> How we doing, man? Hope you are. 40 base power move, oh my god. That's a crit. <laughs> oh my god! Let him cook! Man got the crit. Nut. No. I think this is Venusaur. Right? Yeah. 40 base power move takes 90%. Yep. Pretty much. I'm just gonna suck this. Fuck it. As soon as I found out there's no Ice Beam in this game, this, this Pokemon became a lot less useful. Yeah, fuck you. Get memed on, bitch. Die. Motherfucker, I said die. And with that, Gauntlet my gold is down. Woo! Let's go! Is Gumtree gold hard on AK? You know it, Stefan. That's why I had, what, six deaths all game. Undoubtedly. Alright. And that was Gauntlet Gold, the hack of Pokemon Gold with no healing in Pokemarts, no backtracking, limited resources, and a whole lot of fun. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. This video took a heap of work as I was also learning how to use a new editing software in Premiere Pro and in my opinion, this video is definitely one of the better ones that I've made. So stick around. Until next time though, I'll see you guys later. Peace.